Hey everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. So we are out at Menards today checking out some windows. I've got a broken window and I thought it might just be cheaper to go ahead and buy a new replacement window instead of dealing with a single panel. So I put a call out to a local glass company and one of the uh, main window panels broke. Now for the measurement of the window, they wanted $69 to come out and do the work on it and replace the glass. Now I had a small like 12 by 12 window that was cracked in the storm door and I figured they could just take care of both. I'm really busy doing a lot of things. Well, that was gonna add additional money on top of the $69. Now we're talking old 1950s windows. For $132, I can get an entire replacement window and do the work and have a better window with a screen and get a new double or triple pane window with low E glass and a lifetime warranty on it. And there's an energy savings $15 rebate on it for $120. So they're also having 11% off. For the small 12 by 12 broken glass, I can call the local hardware store company. I can take some simple glass out of a picture frame because it's just old single pane glass and I can do a swap out. So let's see if I can get any glass cut on my own with so, any scraps. You can see this. I've got a big chunk missing out of the corner here. And the local hardware store charges almost as much money for a replacement single pane panel of glass as it would cost me to replace the window with a cheap replacement from Menards. Well, I'm going to save that piece of glass because there's still plenty of uses for that, like broken picture frames or smaller windows. So here's a piece of glass that was in a storm window and it's got a couple little pieces broken out of the corner up here. And you know what? It's just the right size for me that I can cut that section out. So to make this job really easy for myself, I'm just gonna lay this one on top, make a line with my Sharpie and I've got a little handheld cutting tool you just score it. This is just like a little tile cutter that you use for ceramic tiles. There's a tiny little roller ball up at the top. And if you do a neat little trick, you can get a clean cut. Now some people swear by using a cutting oil and we've done it both ways and we've done it successfully and unsuccessfully. Now this is my only big sheet of glass that I've got today, so I'm hoping this is going to be a successful cut. Now I actually need to do two cuts on this. I'm gonna get here. Nope, I can't see that at all. I'm gonna go get a new marker. All right, I found a red marker. I did clean up the glass a little bit before I started, but I do have a line now. Now the neat thing, these are real simple cutting tools, and this is what they use at the hardware store for the most part and you can use them on different types of glasses and tiles also. Um, I had been first taught that you could tap the edge and that these little teeth here were to file the edges so you didn't have any roughness um, and some people would use the ball on the end to tap it which I do not recommend at all. So we're going to score our glass on both sides with the cutter and see how it goes. Now this is kind of old and I don't know how sharp it is but these are roughly five dollars. So the last time that the hardware store cut me a piece of glass, it was a little too short and I had to use caulk to make up the difference. And the time before that, as luck would have it, I broke the glass before I got it back home. So they recommend that you push the glass, the, the roller, forward and then back. Now this is just doing a light etching and I 
rolled in a little bit. I know my cut mark at the top is doing fine because I was able to snap it just with pushing it down on this a little bit. So my cutter is obviously dull since I got another piece off without really trying. And I know a lot of guys will just one cut up. I'm not hearing it etching like I was. And that's why it's important to go ahead and clean your glass before you start. And I've tried it in both directions. pushed too hard and it broke. I have to try again. All right, so I have been painting and working all day long and the daylight is getting away with me. So I've got a little bit of porch light going on here. But the first thing you wanna do is to use your utility knife to go around and scrape these edges to try to get some of the um, debris. You get a lot of dried, uh, caked up 
uh, caulk through there and there's a channel up here at the top you want to make sure that there's no broken glass uh, up there and then you can slip that right up there now a couple things you're going to need is uh, glazier's points and usually you can push these in in a newer soft window I didn't know exactly about this window so I did bring uh, sometimes you can push them in with needle nose pliers or regular pliers I did bring a screwdriver to help me push them in flush and a real little tack hammer um, if I'm gonna need that you also are gonna need caulking to help weatherproof it but basically your glazier points and that little groove is what's going to be holding your window in so I attempted to cut my own glass and I didn't have it flat um, the pallet that I had underneath it was uneven and when I made my score line it kept breaking off a little bit because it was doing such a good job until I got to the point that my cutting tool wasn't sharp enough to make a good mark when I tried to break off a small piece it was done so at least I gave it a try I called the local hardware store I went ahead and let them do this it was eleven dollars a little more than what I wanted to spend but it sure beat spending you know the hundred a hundred and twenty to replace this because I do have storm windows on this as well and I'm just trying to get this closed up so I had mentioned about my storm window see I've got this gap right here so we've just been pulling this down and it looked like there was a window there but it's time to get this buttoned up so it was too dark last night to finish filming this and I knew the temperature was going to be dropping with a potential frost which means at freezing temperatures the caulk says not to use at freezing temperatures and I wanted it to set for as many hours above freezing as possible so today's supposed to be in the high 50s I thought it'd be a good time to go ahead and show you this up close and get my caulking job done so that little letter M right there is a glazing point. It has a point at the end and it allows you to push it in. And this little notch here allows you to slip a screwdriver head in there to help push it in. Most of them went in pretty well. You can see right here, it's a little bit crooked, but the window glass just sets right up in this groove. And if it's not cleaned out of glass, which I had a little trouble with this corner here, had a broken piece. I just took my knife up there and my slotted screwdriver and scraped it until it came clean. And you want to make sure you don't have any hard glazing material or caulk around the edges because like here I had a high spot. I had to just scrape that with my knife and get it flush so that this would go all in. So the top part doesn't need any glazing points because that slot is holding it in. I just went ahead and did four along the sides and three along the bottom. I could have done four on the bottom. You can do whatever is most comfortable for you, but for $12, this is all in here and we just have to hit it with caulk. So like I said before, you need caulk, you need a caulking gun. They sell small tubes of caulk if you'd rather not buy a caulking gun, but I think every homeowner needs a caulking gun for various reasons like bathrooms and windows. So this right here is a tip cutter and you just put this right in there pull the handle and that's going to cut your tip this little this little tool on the end is to pierce your tube you have to stick that right down into the nozzle like that and puncture the tube in the past these weren't on a lot of caulking guns they get lost whatever you can just stick a screwdriver right down in here and I found a Phillips screwdriver goes down there a lot better than a flathead screwdriver um, a tip I learned a long time ago is to slice this on an angle and the higher or closer to the tip you cut it, the smaller the opening's gonna be and give you a little better control. Now, if you're not real good at caulking, you can go ahead and put a piece of painter's tape here, but because this is a window, you've got so much space. I mean, there's a quarter of an inch at least to go around the entire edge, and it's really good to have a damp rag or a damp paper towel so that you can go along the edge like this with your finger to help push it into the crease. We're going to caulk it enough to cover up these glazing points. I think it's super interesting that you can put a house for sale on like Facebook, Craigslist, and everyone wants to tell you their situation or their story. So I was just going along the sidewalk edges cleaning things up. 
makes it a lot easier to shovel the snow later on. And right now I'm getting a lot of leaves and pine needles stuck in it. So I'm out there doing work and this person walks up to me and asks me if the house is going to be for rent or if it's going to be for sale and how their daughter just moved from out of state. And whenever we've had it actually listed for rent, we get all these stories about my disability and my roommate and how my mother is going to move in with me to help take care of the kids. And you know what? We got tired of the stories. We got tired of the late rent. And we said it was easier for us to just hang on to the house and not do yearly repairs or an eviction every couple of months because of somebody's situation in their story. And I know it seems cold, but we've been through it for so many years, so many times that you know, I've been, I've been up close and personal with these situations. So, in this situation, we had changed the lock, and my husband didn't have the key ring with the lock uh, key on it. So, he opened the window and cracked it in the process. So just like that, I have my caulking job done and you can see that it's nice and neat without any extra work. It's always rewarding to do your own repairs and do your own work and see what you can do. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I didn't do a lot of this stuff and being a landlord and a homeowner, I've learned along with my husband to do a lot of the things because if I don't take some things off of his plate, at the end of the day, he's not going to have any time for me or the kids. This way it frees up his Saturday afternoon to do something fun with the family. So thanks for watching everybody. Remember to spend time with your family. Be frugal, save money, and do your own repairs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.